Hello everyone, welcome back to Geo360. Today, in the emergency management first aid video series, I am going to create awareness regarding the first aid for fractures. Fracture is defined as break or crack in the bone. Fractures occur due to various causes. They are classified into three types based on the cause and the site of injury it produces. The direct force causes the break or crack in the bone at the point of application of the force. Indirect force causes break of bone away from the site of the application of force. And the muscular force sometimes causes fractures, but this is rare. The fracture occurs due to violent contraction of a group of muscles. Example, a fracture of ribs can occur on violent coughing. This type of fracture happens very rarely and it is mostly related to other underlying diseases like weakened bone structure. Types of fractures Fractures can be classified into various types like open fracture, closed fracture, simple and complex fractures. In closed fractures, the skin above the fracture is intact. Although the bone ends may have damaged nearby the tissues and blood vessels, the skin above is intact. In open fractures, which is also called as the compound fractures, the skin above the fracture is not intact. There is bleeding. The bone is exposed to the outside air and at the surface. Dirt, germs, etc. can enter via the wound and the risk of infection is very high in these cases. Next, simple and complex fractures. The term complex fracture describes a broken bone that is more severe than what is more common. Fractures can be considered as complex when the bones are broken into many pieces, the soft tissues and vital organs are severely damaged, there are multiple fractures at various levels in a single bone, there is an associated joint dislocation or joint injury. Otherwise, fractures are classified under simple fractures. So, in case of a fracture, what do you see and enquire? Following signs and symptoms may be observed when a person suffered a fracture. The injured complains of pain on the site of fracture or around the area. The injured complains of tenderness that is pain on twitching over the injured area. Never press hard on the suspected fracture spot. There might be swelling of the area around the fracture. There might be bleeding at the location of the fracture. The bone might be sticking out. There might be a dislocation in the area of the fracture. The injured may have lost the capability of normal movements of the affected part. There might be a deformity of the affected limb. If you are not sure whether the bone is broken or not, it is safer to assume that the bone is broken. If the broken legs looks deformed or dis dislocated, do not try to reset it. This might make the injury worse and will cause pain. So what is the first aid which must be done in these kind of situations? Make sure there is no danger around you and the victim. Shout for help and call for emergency as soon as possible. If possible, wash your hands and sanitize your hands before providing the first aid. Wear gloves. If it is not available, you can also use a plastic cover. Fractures often occur in major accidents. Therefore, it is necessary to treat other potential injuries also. The first aider must decide which injury is more urgent. Providing CPR when the victim does not breathe or treating a severe bleeding is more urgent and should be handled as a priority. If you don't know about them, watch our previous video regarding how to control bleeding and how to provide CPR in case of emergencies. There may be more than one fracture in the same patient or even in the same limb. Try not to move the broken or dislocated limb unnecessarily. Try not to move the casualty until the injured part has been secured. If you need to move the victim, be careful when moving or turning him. It's better to ask for assistance by bystanders. Reassure the casualty and advise the person to keep calm. If the casualty is able to support the injured part, ask him to do so. Else, support the injured part with the help of your hands or ask a bystander to do so. You can immobilize the injured part with a bandage or a split. If the first aider is experienced in this technique, you can do these techniques. If you apply a split or a bandage, check the circulation below the bandage or splitting. That is, you can check the circulation at the level of the fingers or toe levels. 
arrange appropriate transport to the nearest healthcare facility available what are splints it is a rigid piece of wood metal or a plastic applied to the fractured limb to support it and prevent further movement of the broken bones reasonably wide splints are better than narrow ones in emergency cases walking sticks umbrellas can also be used splints must be long enough to immobilize the joints above and below the fractured bone splints should be padded with cotton or cloths to make it fit softly observe the casualty continuously and do not give the casualty anything to eat or drink press on the bleeding spot and put pressure using a bandage on the wound so what to do when the person becomes unconscious but is still breathing put him in recovery position and observe him continuously if the person stops breathing perform cpr continuously until you reach the healthcare facility so next i'll be talking about how to act in case of injuries and fractures to the head neck and the spine head neck and spinal injuries are very serious and should be always managed with caution unblocking the breathing passage takes priority over concerns about a potential spinal injury when a person needs to be put in recovery position to keep the airways open this takes a priority over a potential spinal injury if possible support the person's neck while turning him into the recovery position how do you suspect when the person has a potential injury of the head neck or the spine when the person has fell from a height greater than his own standing height when the person involved in a road traffic accident and suffered a heart blow if he is feeling nausea and vomiting he does not remember exactly what has happened if he is behaving in an in- irritated and an unusual way after the accident if he complains of blurring vision if he feels pain or tenderness in the head neck or the back or if he has serious wounds or injuries on the head or if he has serious injuries on the legs and does not complain about the pain or if he is sleepy or drowsy or loses consciousness if he has fits or if he has an unequal pupil size or if blood and brain fluid which is called as the csf cerebrospinal fluid may flow from the ear or nose in case of fracture of the base of the skull how to act specifically in these kind of situations tap him on his shoulders and ask if he is okay do not shake the person too roughly check if the injured is conscious or unconscious and act accordingly to do so check if the person opens his eyes and responds to simple questions like what is your name where do you live how old are you etc check if the injured person responds to simple commands like squeeze my hand move your arm leg foot or hand if there is no response pinch the person and check if he or she opens his eyes or moves if the injured person responds do not try to change the position of the person when there is an head neck back leg or arm injury to keep the head still place your hands or tightly folded clothing on each side of the injured person's head keep the head and neck of the person still only if the person allows you to do so if the injured person does not allow you to touch his head do not enforce the procedure if the spinal cord injury is suspected try to ensure that the injured person continues to lie still until transported to the hospital the injured person is not made to sit or stand do not give the casualty anything to drink or eat do not leave the person alone and keep checking his breathing keep the injured person warm by taking off his wet clothing and cover him with a blanket at least at least 3 people must assist in moving the person like log of food and transport him to the nearest healthcare facility as soon as possible now i will give specific first aid tips for the fracture at different body locations in case of injury or fracture to cheek bone or nose there will be swelling bruising deformity of the face or nose nasal bleeds bleeding from the mouth and difficulty in breathing due to bleeding into the nasal cavities and swollen tissues may be present in these kind of situations apply cold compress on the affected part to reduce pain and swelling to control nasal bleeds watch our previous video regarding it if you don't know how to control the bleeding from the nose never try to put the deformed nose back into normal position as it would worsen the fracture further in case of fracture or injury to the lower jaw the casualty might have difficulty in speaking or opening his mouth his saliva becomes blood stained pain increases while speaking and swallowing face and lower jaw will be swollen some crepitus might also be felt by the victim 
Crepitus here refers to the sensation or sound produced due to the friction between the broken bones. In such cases, don't ask the casualty to speak. Don't give them anything to eat or drink. Observe their respiration and the airway might be obstructed by the tongue falling back or by the blood clogging the airways. With the victim leaning forward, place the palm of his or your hand on his chin and gently press the jaw upwards against the upper jaw. Upper jaw will act as a splint for this fracture. If the first aider is somewhat trained, apply a bandage on the head to support the jaw fracture. In this ca if the casualty shows signs of vomiting, remove it and put it again. If the casualty is able to sit, ask him to bend his head forward to make sure the casualty's tongue doesn't slip backward or the blood doesn't choke him. Next, what to do in case of the collarbone injury or fracture? Here the casualty experiences severe pain which is aggravated by movement. The casualty tends to relieve pain by supporting the arm of the injured side and by inclining his head towards the injured side. Broken end of the clavicle might also be felt. Abnormal position of the shoulder blade may also be noticed. In case of shoulder bone fracture, tell the person to immobilize the arm on the injured side by holding the arm close to his body. Do not remove his or her clothing. Support the arm on the injured side with the help of a sling. In case of collarbone fracture, do the same first aid as that for shoulder fracture and additionally place a pad in the armpit on the affected side and provide a sling with a triangular bandage if you are a trained first aider. In case of fracture of ribs and breastbone, casualty experiences pain in the injured area which increases on breathing. Crepitus may also be felt. Casualty takes shallow breaths. Crepitus here means abnormal sounds during breathing. Blood in the sputum indicates damage to the lungs. There might also be open wound in the chest and air may escape from it. First of all, bandage any open wounds and move the casualty to a comfortable position and transfer him to a healthcare facility as soon as possible. Hope this was very much informative. If you have any queries, leave it in the comment box given below. Thank you for watching the video. Like, share and subscribe our channel and stay tuned for further updates. Thank you.